Good morning, everybody. Great to be able to be together with you this morning. Uh, excited to preach to the East region of the Capital Rivers Church this morning. Uh, typically, my sermons are shown in the West. Uh, that's where uh, we attend church and uh, we live. But it's exciting to be able just to share with you guys. So many of you have gotten to know your, your kids, your teens, uh, you as a family, and it's just been great to uh, build uh, and, and begin to get to know who you are and uh, share my our life uh, with you here. Uh, today, this morning, we're going to be looking at Psalms 119, uh, 145 through 160. Uh, as many of you know, we're kind of getting down to the end of February, which means uh, we've been working on connecting uh, with the Word for the last couple months. And we're winding down here and we're getting to the end of Psalms 119 that we've been going through this whole time. Uh, and uh, so, like I said today, I'm going to be preaching Psalms 119, 145 to 160. Uh, Noah is actually preaching in the West today, and he's going to be covering Psalms 119, 129 through 44. And believe it or not, uh, by next weekend, next Sunday, we will have covered the whole book of Psalms 119. So exciting to do that and exciting to uh, bring that to a close and we can work on uh, connecting uh, with hope uh, the next couple months as we continue to connect uh, as a congregation. Uh, the theme of today's uh, sermon is Love Connection. Love connection. And you know, we just got done with Valentine's Day. And so uh, I think the spirit uh, has me in a amorous, loving kind of mood. And uh, along with when I read this passage, uh, it really connected with me. So uh, Valentine's Day and talking about love. And uh, also as I, I came up with this title, I remembered a TV show uh, called Love Connection. Welcome to Love Connection, where old fashioned romance Modern day technology. The funniest thing about it uh, was their clothing and hairstyles back in that time. It was so funny to watch and, and connect. But the idea of Love Connection was uh, one person would get on uh, the, the stage and they would have three different uh, people to choose from. And they got to go on a date with them and see if they connected and, and they had a, a love connection. Uh, you know, so as I start thinking about that, let me ask you a question. Uh, which one of your family members do you love the most? No, 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 don't answer that. Don't answer that. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't want you to answer that question. Um, in our house, obviously, it's a joke between our girls sometimes. Which one do you love the most? That type of thing. And it's funny, I, I might have shared this before, but uh, typically Maddie, my oldest daughter, comes to me and Sophie, my uh, youngest daughter will go to Lauren. And not that we love each other more or less, but that's who we're naturally drawn to. Although I will tell you, when we bring up suggestions or, or scenarios like, hey, if you had to choose one of us to live with, who would you live with? Both of my girls always say my wife. I don't fully understand that, but you know, it is what it is. She's the one that keeps things clean and organized and tidy. So I guess that makes sense uh, for us and our family and relationship. Uh, but uh, anyway, love connection. Uh, when I read these passages, when I read uh, the Psalms 145 uh, through 160, it did really speak to me. Um, the idea of, of love connection, the connection between uh, us or, and the author and God's word and his relationship with God. So let's go ahead and, uh, and dive right in. Before we get there, though, I do want to uh, do one of the things I normally do and give those of you who need some extra attention, things to help you do things, to help you engage in the worship service. So today, my thing is going to be get a deck of cards and build a card tower. See how high you can build a card tower. Uh, no bending the cards, uh, but I want to see if you can get up to three levels. I've gotten up to two, but I've never gotten up to three. So I want to see if you can get up to, uh, to building three levels. Let's jump into Psalms 119, uh, and we'll start in verse 145. I call with all my heart. Answer me, Lord, and I will obey your decrees. I call out to you, save me, and I will keep your statutes. I rise before dawn and cry for help. I put my hope in the word. My eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises. Hear my voice in accordance with your love. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your laws. Those who devise wicked schemes are near, but they are far from your law. Yet you are near, Lord, and your commandments are true. Long ago I learned from your statutes, and you established them to last forever. This passage, when, when I read this, I thought, man, I could read this passage every single morning. And I could, 
it would help me. It would help me focus on God. It would, it would speak kind of things that my heart wants to communicate to God. I love that it would help me throughout the day. And when I read this stanza, a, a specific feeling stood out to me, a passion, a longing, an obsession. In verse 145, I call with all my heart, answer me, Lord. I felt like there was so much emotion in that. Verse 146, save me. 147, I rise before dawn and cry for help. Verse 148, my eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises. It seems to me that the author is communicating an obsession with God, a need, a dependence on God uh, that is incredible, revolutionary, amazing, this, this interdependence that's so, that's so, so important to him. It reminds me of uh, when I was younger, uh, uh, the idea of, of puppy love. Um, specifically, verse 148, my eyes stay open throughout the watch of the night that I may meditate on your promises. It, it reminds me uh, of, of when I was a teenager and I, I would have a girlfriend or somebody that I was really interested in and, and we would do the thing on the phone, you know? No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. And that would go on for 20 or 30 minutes and one of us would fall asleep on the phone or things like that. Teenagers, I don't recommend this. But I'm saying that's what it reminded me of, uh, that, that that kind of uh, that, that intense passion, that desire to, to be together and, and an unwillingness uh, to have uh, anything else uh, in, in our minds. And that's what I see really uh, this author communicating here through this time. You know, there are a few words in the Hebrew uh, that mean love. And one of them is ahava. Ahava. And, and this love is, is, is just that. It's a passionate it's a spontaneous, it's an addictive love. This kind of love that just is, is so passionate. And we see it in some of Psalms uh, 8 verse 6. It says, place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love, ahave, is as strong as death. It's jealousy, unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. When I, when I read this passage... Uh, what I hear is almost uh, like, like, a, like an intense longing, this desire, this, this your love is as strong as death. That, that's an incredible metaphor for how passionate uh, this love is. And, and it almost, uh, and I see, you know, in this passage here that we're reading in Psalms 119, this, there's almost like a jealousy, like I long and I want to be with you. Verse 150, those who devise wicked schemes near me, but they are far from your law. Just that idea like, hey, these guys are over here. Don't worry about them because I love you. I need you. I want to connect with you. A passion, a longing, an intimacy. Let me ask you a question. What's something with, that you're obsessed with? What's something uh, that, that, that you just, uh, that you know, like this is an obsession for me? And, 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 and how do you know that you're obsessed? You know, maybe you're not very good at it. You're, maybe you're not the right one to answer that question for yourself. Uh, maybe you should ask your uh, friends or your wife or your kids. They often will be able to tell you uh, what, uh, what, what things you're obsessed with. You know, both guys and girls, we can definitely get obsessed with sports. Yeah, most of you know I'm a Patriots fan. Uh, I'm an Ohio State Buckeyes fan. Those things are important uh, to me. Uh, Phil, you're probably wearing a, a, a Ravens something right now. Some, somebody in your house for sure. Sweatpants, sweatshirt, something. I bet you're wearing something Ravens uh, right now. And don't get too hard on Phil because I, I can look around and find the Steelers gear uh, on many of you as well. <laughs> but we do. We get obsessed with our sports. And whether it's football or soccer or hockey, uh, we can definitely get impassioned. Uh, about those things. And I, I don't know about you, but when I'm excited about a football game, I'll plan my day around that game. Uh, I'll, I'll have appointments or different things I'm doing, but I'll make sure uh, when Ohio State is playing for the national championship that I know when that game is and then I'm sitting in front of my uh, TV ready to watch that game. Uh, social media. You know, we can get lost uh, for hours an obsession with social media. I'll, I'll pull something up, click on Facebook. Next thing I know, I look up the clock and an hour has gone away. I just lose track of time. Blogs, reading on our phones or, or reading different things. We can just so caught up 
uh, in those things. Some of us are, are waiting for church to be over so we can get back to our Facebook or our IG or, or, or our blogs that we want to read. Uh, and it's just a, a polling. And some of you right now are, are obsessed with building a card tower. It's fallen three or four times and, and you can't get it. And you're just obsessed to try to get uh, to that uh, third level. It's an all-consuming passion uh, that fills you up, that everybody knows that, that, that you're about it, and, uh, and that it, it really is clear that it's, it's important to you in your life. Do you have the same passion about God and His Word as you do about these other things that you're obsessed with? Do you plan your day around God? You know, right now, it's really easy to fit church in. It's really easy to, uh, oh, I can watch church anytime. And then Sunday night rolls into Monday, Monday rolls into Tuesday, Tuesday rolls into Friday, and you may have just completely missed an opportunity to connect, to engage uh, with the body. Midweek, same thing. I know it's hard. Everyone has Zoom fatigue. It's really hard to get on and engage. I have it. So many people I've talked to have had it. Um, but if we're passionate about God and His Word, and we're passionate about God's people, we plan our days around it. It's something that's so important to us. Now, when was the last time that you just got lost in your Bible? That you started to read your Bible, read your Word, and next thing you know, hours upon hours went by, and time uh, just melted away. Do you have the ahave, the love, the passion for God's Word? The author in Psalms to be, uh, seems to be communicating that he does um, and, and that this is something that's so, so important uh, to him. You know, uh, this passion, this ahave, isn't something that is always there. Uh, ahave is kind of an up and down type of, of thing, you know, when, when you're young and dating and it's exciting and, and that's when we have that ahave feeling. As a married man, there's times in my relationship where I'm just so in love with my wife, so passion and passion for my wife. And there's other times when I'm just living my days and, and going time. It doesn't mean I don't love her. We're going to talk about that in just a, a minute. Um, but uh, but it is. And but, but are we having, do you have those times of a have, of deep love uh, for God and for his Bible? You know, there's some things that we can do uh, if we don't have that. It, it, it happens. It happens to all of us. We go through these times and maybe you're missing that passion or you feel like, man, I want to get back to a passionate relationship with God. There's some things we can do to help us with that. Um, I, I, this would be a great discussion if we were in person. Hey, what do you think? Hey, what do you think? And polling from the audience and getting different ideas. But, uh, but a couple of things I can think of, you know, we can ask a friend. For help, If you just want to rekindle passion in your relationship with God, in your Bible, uh, ask a friend to help. There's so many people who want to help uh, to do that and might even need it and work together uh, to do it. Uh, find a podcast or a book. You know, sometimes if we've been a Christian for 20, 30, 40 years, you'd be like, I've read the Bible, I get it. But when we get a new book or uh, listen to a podcast, it really helps the Bible jump off the page at us and can rekindle that passion. Uh, listen to music. Uh, music often engages you, spiritual music that helps you connect to God's word and connect into your relationship with God. You know, the teens uh, have put together a spiritual playlist uh, for the other teens and there's different genres of music. If you want to jump on, we can send out that uh, link as well. But, uh, uh, but the teens have put together a list for other teens to help them connect with God. And, uh, and, and also just share with a friend what you've been learning spiritually. So often in our lives, if we just share uh, what we get, we get excited about it. It brings a passion and a desire in our lives. Let's be committed to being obsessed with God and his word and helping each other find a have. A have is a passion and desire uh, for who God is and what he wants for our lives. I know it's really interesting that these passages are back to back. I read the first half of my stanza, and then I'm going to read a, a second stanza here in a minute. But it's interesting because uh, as, as we're talking about this ahave, this passion, when I read this next stanza, I see a different idea. I sense a different spirit uh, in this second stanza. So let's go ahead and read the second stanza, and we'll see what we get uh, from, from this one. Uh, Psalm 119, uh, and then we'll start in verse 53. Look on my suffering and deliver me, for I have not forgotten your law. Defend my cause and redeem me. Preserve my life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked. 
for they do not seek out your decrees. Your compassion, Lord, is great. Preserve my life according to your laws. Many are the foes who persecute me, but I have not turned from your statues. I look on the faithless with loathing, for they do not obey your word. See how I love your precepts. Preserve my life, Lord, in accordance with your love. All the words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. You know, last week, uh, Brett talked about stress fractures. And he talked about how uh, when we start living our life, there are challenges. There's things that come up uh, with repeated exercise over and over again or going through different challenges in our life. We, we can begin to get these stress fractures uh, in our life. And, and he was talking about ways to protect against those and, and things we can do to help avoid these stress fractures in our life. But the truth is, is that life is just challenging sometimes. There's things that happen that we're enduring and going through. The Bible, God never promised life was going to be easy. Uh, and it's not always going to be easy for us. And, 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 and so that's what I see when I read uh, this stanza. I see someone, the author, that's facing challenges and going through a hard time. He says in 153, look on my suffering and deliver me. 154, defend my cause and redeem me. 156, your compassion, Lord, is great. 157, may your foes, uh, many are the foes who persecute me. 159, Pres uh, preserve, preserve my life, Lord, in accordance with your love. Those things are make it sound like he is going through or the author is going through something challenging, that it's not easy, and, and that, that he's wrestling through it and trying to figure out and, and begging God to be with him and help sustain him through uh, this hard time. We also see in this passage a commitment to God and his word. In verse 153, for I have not forgotten your law. Verse 157, but I have not turned away from your statutes. Verse 160, for all your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. It's just an idea here that I might be going through hard times, but I am committed to you, that I am committed to continuing to wrestle through my relationship with you and, and use your Bible to help me get through uh, this time. You know, there's another word for love uh, that's used in the, in the Hebrew, and that's the word uh, chesed. chesed. And, and that means a, a loving kindness, a steadfast love, an unfailing love. In, in Psalms 51, uh, this, the spirit of, of David here is, a, is he's looking for a chesed love from God. Uh, after he committed adultery uh, with Bathsheba, uh, please love chesed me even though I've done wrong. Uh, you know, this, this, this love is a type of love that, that is, is I'm going to love you even when it doesn't feel good. I'm going to love you even when it doesn't make sense. There's not a lot of passion in it. Uh, like like passion, like a have, like we were talking about, but this is more of like a, a, a committed, I'm in this relationship forever type of love. We see it in Hosea 6, 6. It says, for I desire mercy, chesed, not sacrifice. And, and so it's this, hey, uh, it's this commitment type of love uh, that's there. And, and, and I see this in this style. You know, as we think about relationships, we do have relationships that are passionate and, and intense at times, but a real relationship is based on commitment, on a commitment uh, that stays and, and, uh, and it's long lasting. You know, what, are, what relationships have you been committed to uh, in your life? I know there's some Washington football fans out there that know exactly what I'm talking about. Hey, I'll be honest, I'm a Bengals fan first. And uh, you have to be committed to be a Bengals fan. That's for sure. <laughs> Long lasting uh, relationship and grit to really build uh, that relationship over the long term. You know, those are all fun and funny, but uh, to be honest, uh, my relationship with my wife has really taken this type of commitment. Um, when we were young and dating and had the Ahave love, the passion that was there, it was great. And we were uh, dating long distance and, and driving back and forth and having this great time, and it was awesome. Uh, and then she moved to Ohio for us to get married, and, and that was passionate and amazing and awesome. And right before we went to get married, 
uh, she started to have some health challenges. And she was working full time. We were serving in the full time ministry, or not full time, we were serving in the ministry, uh, youth and family ministry, uh, while we were working full time. And it was tiring. We were expending a lot of energy. And she just started to get tired and lethargic and, and unable to, uh, to kind of function. And, uh, and so she started to go to the doctor, and, and, and they just said it was really bad allergies. And so, you know, that was tough for her, and that was tough for us. And, and, and we got married, and that was awesome. And then as our, our relationship continued to, to grow, it, that didn't go away. Uh, it actually just got worse and worse. And she really uh, was challenged with health challenges. And I'm this young, vibrant, and we're this young, vibrant couple, and we want to have fun in our relationship, and we want to go explore and be excited and have lots of energy, and, and she just didn't have it. She was suffering. She would go to work, she would come home, and she would go to bed, and I wouldn't see her again until she came home from work the next day. And then she would be tired, and we might have dinner together, and then she'd go to bed. She was just exhausted and, and beat up, and, and, and the, the love, that ahave that we had in, in the beginning of our relationship just wasn't there the same. It got to the point where she was so sick that we decided to move uh, to Baltimore where, where we thought she would be healthy. Um, and we moved, and we're excited about that, and, and, and then we got there, and she still uh, wasn't healthy. She still had some of these health challenges. And, uh, and this was hard for our relationship, and we both struggled and, and, and fought, and, 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 and not with each other, but just with the idea of, of, of needing and wanting to love each other and figuring out what this new life was going to look like for us. That absolutely took this type of love, this determination, this just said to be determined. We were determined. We are determined uh, to work out this relationship no matter the circumstances, whether it's passionate or not, whether it's, it's, it's intense or not. We are committed and determined uh, to be uh, with each other. I was committed to her then and I'm committed to her now. You know, we say when we get married uh, through sickness and in health, and that's that type of commitment, this just said commitment. Uh, you know, some of you are determined uh, to build this this card tower now. <laughs> First you are obsessed, and now you're just determined. I'm going to build this tower. Uh, no matter what, I'm going to get to this third level. I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to send it to Brian. It's going to be awesome. Um, don't give up. Some of you might have given up. But don't give up. Keep fighting for it. You know, this is the same kind of commitment that God hopes for for us. This is the same kind of determination that God hopes for in our relationship with him, in our relationship with the word, with the Bible. When we don't feel like it, when it's not fun, when it's hard, when other people are telling us to give up, that's when Chesed comes in. That's when this determined love comes in for him and his relationship with God. Are you, are we committed to God and his word in these areas of our lives? You know, I think this one might be uh, even more important than the, the obsessed because sometimes it's not easy to stick in for the long haul. It's not fun. It's not energetic. It's, it takes grit and desire uh, to do so. I know uh, for me, when I was working a full-time job and, and uh, trying to stay engaged and I had a family uh, and I, I was moving different things and kids and a wife, it, it was really hard sometimes to make time to really focus and engage uh, in God. Um, and, and through those times, uh, it, it really taught me this idea of chassad and, and really being committed to building uh, that long-lasting uh, relationship. Sometimes I just lacked motivation. Sometimes by the time that I woke up the next morning, I was still tired. I can be that way today. Sometimes, you know, with COVID and being stuck in the house, and, and I shared the other uh, a few weeks ago about lacking motivation sometimes. Sometimes I can just be tired and not want to get in my word, not want to get in the Bible and dig and connect with God in the morning. I know I'm not the only one. I know there's those of you uh, who feel uh, like that too. And, and God hopes for this chassad. You know, something that really uh, helped me through those times was getting creative in my relationship with God listening to podcasts on my way to work, on my way home from work, praying uh, on my commute in different directions, uh, getting together uh, with uh, other people who work near me to pray, 
to connect uh, during the week uh, on our lunch breaks and those types of things. Uh, making special time, making sure that over the weekends that I would take extra time to connect with God because that was so important to me and really building that commitment and long lasting uh, time in my relationship with God. The psalmist says in, in verse 158, I look on the faithless, faithless with loathing for they do not obey your word. The psalmist says that if we are faithless, if we are, are engaged in our relationship with God, if we're not willing to be committed, he says, I look down on you with loathing. Loathing, a feeling of intense dislike, disgust, and hatred. He was so committed to God. He was so determined to be close to him, no matter what the situation, that anything else he loathed. And, uh, and I think God wants that same commitment from us too to be committed to the scriptures. Uh, you know, and I think this is really important. I'm gonna take a minute and talk to the teenagers here. I think, and not just the teenagers, those of you in your 20s, and, and, and you've grown up in a culture where uh, video games are so accessible, where, uh, where your phone has all kinds of, of, of different opportunities for you, that, that there's things to click on all around, and it's so entertaining. And sometimes it's hard just to sit and engage in God's word. I really want to encourage you and challenge you to try, get in there, engage with the Bible. Don't just, if you're tempted to play video games, take some time from your video games, set those aside and dig into your scriptures. The Bible has so much to offer, so many cool stories, so many adventures, but sometimes we dismiss them because we're so stimulated by all these other things around us. Take some time. Commit yourself to the Bible. If you're having a hard time with it, talk to somebody. Pray. We absolutely uh, want to help you uh, through this time. Whether you're a teenager, a campus student, a single or married, let's be committed to God and his word the same way that this psalmist is committed uh, and, and can communicates his commitment to God uh, through these scriptures. In conclusion, love, connection. In the show, at the end, uh, the, the idea of the show of Love Connection is that the guy or the girl who, who has this, these three people to choose from and they choose and they get to go on a date and then they talk about how that date went and how that connection time went. And if it went great, then uh, the show would pay for them to go out again on another date. And if that date didn't, there wasn't a love connection there. Uh, they got to choose one of the other people and the show would pay for them uh, to go uh, on a second date. Uh, in, in, in that work, you know? And so, so that's what this, this show was about. The truth is, is that, that, that this is where the Bible differs from the show. <laughs> the Bible always fits. There isn't a second option. There isn't a second date. The Bible is a fit for you. Um, you know, much better than the way those cards that you were stacking fit together, that's for sure. Uh, the Bible will fit uh, to you and to your life. There are so many things in our lives that we're passionate about today, that we're committed to today. Let's make on the top of that list being passionate and committed to God and his word. When we do that, uh, we are able to make a huge impact in our hearts, in the community around us, and people uh, all over uh, who we get to connect with. If you're visiting with us today and you just happen to click on uh, and want to reach out to us and, and you're, you're feeling like, man, I've always had a hard time connecting uh, with the Bible. Remember, the Bible always fits. Please connect to us. Find uh, our information on the website, capitalrivers.org, uh, and we'd love to connect with you and help you see why we are so passionate and why we want the Bible to be passionate and, and apply it to your life. If you've been a member for a while and you just feel like you've lost uh, the love of the Bible, I beg you, I implore you to get with somebody, connect with somebody, try to find a way to rekindle that passion, try to find a way to rekindle that commitment because that's what's gonna sustain us uh, when life is challenging in our lives. The writer of this psalm is obsessed, Ahave, and determined, Chesad, to trust God and his word, and I hope you will be as well. Have a great day.